Hey guys, we're back here with another LEGO City Guys video. Today we are going to take a look at the Saturn V rocket that was released earlier this year and show just how much detail was captured in this set. We also have the Shuttle Adventure to take a look at, which was released back in 2010, to compare to. First we'll take a look at how the Saturn V looks fully assembled and ready for display. You have the rocket fully assembled in all three stages on top of some custom built truss stands that you build throughout the build process of the rocket as well along with the lunar lander, three astronauts and the uh, module that comes back to earth to splash down in the ocean. The sheer size of this set is impressive as it is. Both of these rockets are built on a 1 to 110 scale and the space shuttle adventure on its own stands a, a, almost a foot and a half tall while the Saturn V set from this year stands a full three feet high in total height. It's pretty impressive. Now some of you might not know the history of this rocket, exactly how it worked, and you may be wondering what it looked like during a launch sequence or how, how all the different stages and parts of the rocket worked. And because of how well designed this set was and well thought out, I can show you exactly that. So when the rocket launched, it was all of these main F1 engines at the bottom, the first five engines, the first stage, all firing at the same time. This whole first stage was just to get us up and off the Earth high enough that the atmosphere didn't bother us anymore, or at least close. So once we were high enough for that, this whole first section of the rocket was staged off and was, was sent to fly back to the Atlantic Ocean to crash into the ocean. Then these J2 engines lit up and the second stage carried us the rest of the way out of the atmosphere. Once we were out of the atmosphere, the fiery ring as depicted in many of the, the, the historical videos broke off along with the second stage. Then this last engine was used to get us into our parking orbit around the Earth before we injected into our lunar orbit. Up in this fairing is actually where the lunar lander was kept. It wasn't up here at the top with the crew module. So once we were in this parking orbit, we had to stage apart from this final, st this final section to get us into Earth orbit, break apart this fairing to send back to the Atlantic Ocean, flip Oh, and once the rocket was high enough off the ground that we didn't need the launch escape system anymore, we staged that off and it flew away from the rocket before this first stage even left. Once we were in this Earth parking orbit, the lunar lander looked something like this on top of the third stage, third core stage of the rocket. Once the fairing was detached, the crew module actually staged and flipped 180 degrees around, grabbing the lunar lander off of the top of the third core stage and pulling it away. The reason it was positioned this far down and this crazy maneuver was done around the Earth was because of the way of the weight distribution. You can see, because this is all scaled, this is all at the same scale, just how much, how big the lunar lander really was compared to the crew module. So it was much more efficient to put, and practical, to put three astronauts up here at the top by themselves than to try to put all, and, and do that crazy maneuver, than it was to try to put all of this weight all the way at the top of the rocket. It, you, they were better off, the risk was, was lower to have this lunar lander all the way down here and to try this maneuver to, to flip around, grab it, and pull it out of this last core stage than it was to try and put it all the way at the top. Once this module was attached to the lunar lander, it, it performed the lunar injection burn, which burned enough fuel to get us into a collision course with the moon, essentially. This flew all the way to the moon, became, got into a parking orbit around the moon, uh, detached from the lunar lander, the lunar lander went down to the surface of the moon, and landed. Once they were done with the, the lunar lander, the whole lunar lander didn't actually come back. Just the top portion, the legs stayed there. So the top portion of the lunar lander would detach from the legs, fly back up to meet with the 
stage that was still in orbit with the crew module. Connect with the crew module. They would do one final burn to put us back on a collision course with the Earth. Then they would stage off that last rocket. And it was just the crew module that came back, which is what you see here. These are both the same part, and the rocket is depicted as white, whereas then the display piece is depicted as the true color that it was when it came when you, you saw it come back to the Atlantic Ocean. And it's pretty crazy if you think about it, just how much rocket it takes to get such a small piece to go where we actually need it to, and just how much of it is used just to get us off the Earth and not even to where we need to go. The new LEGO Saturn V takes into account every detail anyone could ask for, especially someone from the aerospace industry like myself. Anything from very minute details on the F1 engines at the bottom of the rocket, all the way through the rocket, matching the colors and the details as you go up with all printed Legos and no stickers, all the way up to the crew module and the launch escape system at the very tip of the rocket. Now if we take a closer look at the detail of the individual stages, starting with the first stage, you can see the detail that they put into these first stage core F1 rockets at the base of the rocket. There were five in total on the, on the stage one. But you can just see the detail and the time that was taken to think about everything. The, the ducting that went around, the ventilation, the plumbing coming in and out of the rockets, the, the different, just, just the different components that you wouldn't expect to see in something like a Lego set. I mean, they really thought about everything. Including, as you go up the rocket and if you, as you build it, you'll see inside of the rocket that they actually kept true to not just what the, the casing was on the outside, the colors, but the colors internally of the actual fuel tanks and whatnot. They, they matched it as it went up with the alternating black and gray and white depending on what it, what it was on the real thing. and it was, It's just really cool to see the details that were thought about and incorporated into this set. Moving on to stage two of the rocket, you can see they, they did include the J2 engines, the same thing, five J2 engines pr propelling stage two up and through the atmosphere. Obviously these aren't our main flagship engines like we did with the F1s. So there's not as much detail. They don't show off the plumbing as much and the ventilation and whatever. It's mainly just something to look like engines in the right cor correct places at the correct scale. But they did the same thing on the inside with the, the painting of the tanks. I really like the way they did the, uh, the modular, modularity of the, the staging on the, the rocket as well. Using the, the clips and whatnot to put it together instead of something like pegs or something that are, that are easier to fly apart when you're pulling them apart. The, the clips are nicely hold it together but are very easy to pull apart when you want to show somebody. But everything is to scale and very accurate. You have the casing for the next stage up engine and the internals. Same thing on the first stage. And overall they pretty much hit the nail on the head in every part of the stage two on this one. Moving on to this final core stage of the Saturn V, you can see the uh, final J2 engine that was, you could see the, the casing for on the last stage internally. Same thing with the clips holding it together. Nicely hold, holds it nice snug in place but is able to let go when you want to show, show it off to people. The staging all the way up is very good. Again with the, the fairing, they actually do have a peg to where the lunar lander will mount and be placed inside the fairing if you want to do it that way. So you can show right here where the lunar lander can go right on top. Onto there. And then it goes right inside of the fairing. The fairing breaks apart just as it would have on the, on the real thing. Revealing the final engine to get us to lunar orbit. And they even took into account the trusses and whatnot on the launch escape system. So what this did was in the event of something going wrong on the pad with one of the first stages 
this was still attached to the crew module and would pull the crew module off the top of the rocket and away from, away from the trouble on the pad and to safety. The idea with getting rid of it is that once you were high enough off the ground, you could now, if you needed to, just stage away from it without the, the launch escape system and just fly back down to the ground so we no longer needed the launch escape system. Looking back at the Space Shuttle Adventure from 2010, there's quite a bit of detail in this set, but most of it was sticker detail or put onto the spaceship in some other way. It wasn't really build detail. You'll see that the Adventure does have the cargo bay with the arm, robotic arm that comes out as it did on the real shuttle, with an included satellite to go with the shuttle for added realism as well as the shuttle being able to stage from its main boosters to get it up off the earth as well as being able to stage from the main fuel tank once it was in orbit The landing gear was also retractable and was mo was movable and functional. And other parts of the rocket were included with realism, such as the engines, the three main vector thrusters, and the reaction control systems. But overall, it was a pretty simple build as far as that kind of realism detail goes for the history of the rocket. It was made to look like a shuttle with a small passenger window to look to scale. The passengers inside were, were minifigures which were not to scale at all. But overall it was a pretty cool set at the time. And it was mostly historically accurate as far as the way, as the, the way that it looked. And that pretty much sums it up for this video. The Space Shuttle Adventure, as you can see from this from this comparison, is obviously a little bit more of a kid-oriented set. It's more about looking like a rocket, having some of those details that someone that knows the history and the, the engineering behind it that can appreciate, but not necessarily trying to hit it all as accurate as possible. Whereas this new Saturn V is definitely geared towards someone who's wanting to know everything that they're building while they're building it and really enjoy the, the history and the engineering that went into the Saturn V project.